Hey guys and welcome to my WPRA World Finals vlog. This was filmed in November so it's been a little bit. This was like probably my 10th run on Dakota maybe. So we're going back in time just a little bit. Here you can see me saddling up. We have an exhibition this day I went ahead and got one since he's really new to me and I've never been to this facility before. So I wanted to get in there and kind of look at everything. So I'm getting him tacked up. I'm going to check and see that my cinches are in the right place for him. Make sure my saddle is in the right place and then we're going to gently do up those cinches. I don't make them super tight just yet and I'm in a really chill outfit because it is just a little exhibition. I believe we are running either late this day or the next day. I can't exactly remember but I'm in my very casual attire for this. So now that my saddle is right and the cinches are done, I'm going to start putting on my Master Saddles breast collar. I've been really just leaving this on my saddle. I really like how it looks on all of my horses. I'm going to get it clipped. And then I can't remember if I put all the boots on or not, so we're going to find out. Yes, I did. So I am putting on these black sunflower sports boots just in case he were to want to go a little bit faster than I had asked. He would be all prepared. My plan this day was to lope the pattern so I could really kind of get a feel for the arena and I wanted to practice two handing around the barrels because I'm quite a big chicken and have not gotten to the point where I can comfortably do that especially not in a run so I'm getting these front boots on him these look really good on him I like the black I know some people say that yellow is bad luck in the arena but I think that's up to you and how you feel I have a lot of other superstitions though so don't worry i'm not judging you if you think yellow is a bad color to wear because i think purple always makes me hit a barrel or have not a great run so we're both delusional it's okay <laughs> now that the back boots are on i am going to move on to the bell boots my dog is really getting after a squeaky toy right now so now i'm doing the bell boots they match these are from hothead stalls so we're all have the full matchy matchy set here uh, i didn't go out with my outfit since um it doesn't really count for anything and i get my helmet on and we go to warm up i like to get him really warm in case he were to go a little bit faster than i asked he can get pretty pumped up uh, I also want to get in the arena once before we run because it helps him fire harder the second time he goes in. So I like to do an exhibition when I can, but usually at a rodeo, I do not get the chance. Uh, so I'm going to walk both ways, really stretching him out after being in the trailer for a fairly long haul. And this night, he was pretty... Um, looky he was looking at everything screaming at chester so i trot him you can see his ears are way too far forward um so i trotting him around i think i cut through the middle to do a little figure eight and change directions i want both sides warm i don't just work one side and not the other and he was wanting to lope when i was just wanting to trot so we had to have a tiny little argument right there over it but no hard feelings um so now we are just going to keep on trotting. I do post the trot on him, especially when he is a little more uppity like he is in this clip. He was definitely wanting to go. I think he could probably hear the announcer calling names for the exhibitions. Once I'm done trotting, I am going to lope him and I loped him pretty big circles to warm up. That way I know that he's not going to pull anything, tweak anything, and I'm just getting him really prepared to the best of my abilities. I never want to not warm my horse up and something happen in the arena that was completely avoidable. So we're going to lope for a while going this way and then once I am done we will switch directions and head off the other way.
it is time for our little exhibition. I'm really checking out the holding pin to the alleyway situation because it's kind of like a little maze back there. I'm not going to lie. We are in Waco, Texas, so if you ever run there, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to really get him to walk in instead of take off from the back. So I'm trying to convince him to lope. He's wanting to go quite a bit faster. There I came in too far to the right and I'm still trying to slow him down. I two hand that first barrel and I'm still really just trying to slow him down. Two hand that second barrel. It was really, really pretty. And then here's where I ride really weird. I don't know why I was trying so hard not to hit that barrel. Like it's not a pop-up barrel. But there I'm petting him and really telling him to slow down. He really wanted to run so I felt bad. But if I didn't pull on him, we were going to go about 100 miles per hour through there. And we did not need to do that. So now it is Friday morning and I'm hauling my tack to the stall all the way from our horse trailer. So thankfully I have this handy dandy cart here. I'm in my outfit that we're going to run in. And you'll see why my pants are like that in just a minute. Okay, don't judge me too hard. It was really wet and rainy here. There was standing water everywhere. And it was fairly cold but thankfully not too cold especially compared to what it's like right now that it has snowed but in November it wasn't too terrible in Texas they had actually shut the garage door we had been going in so that's why I looked confused a minute ago and pointing because I had to walk just a little bit further than I had to do the previous night but that's okay getting my steps in with my little cart there are a ton of stalls here so the barn was huge and also kind of like a maze trying to remember where my stalls were having to look at the numbers on the outside there the aisle was a little blocked so we had to make a change in direction and keep on chugging along now i'm going to get in there and put dakota's halter on dakota is going to be the only one running this weekend i also give him a little bit of a meprazole just one dose this is going to coat his stomach and really prevent him from getting ulcers because we cannot have that so i give them that before they run usually or before they haul i have on pantaloons right now because i know these players will get outrageously disgusting if i let them be free before i run so i just look minorly crazy i ended up deciding to go into the arena to watch a few runs since i was a little lighter in the draw so i threw him a snack we went in and now we are back i got his halter on and tied him up and i'm putting his flare strip on first because it needs to be put on 30 minutes before you get on it says but also because if i don't I absolutely will forget. So now you can see my whole outfit. I have my back number on and I'm getting on the matching red flare strip to go with my outfit because of course we are going to be matchy matchy. Next I'm going to brush him, make sure he is really clean and then throw on my saddle pretty much the exact same way. You just watched me do it for my exhibition so I'll check back in with you when I'm putting on my sports boots. Okay, it's time for the sports boots. I went with the cheetah rose. You can see that the red matches my shirt, of course. So we're gonna be really matchy today. Red shirt, red flare strip, and red boots. These boots just really have red on those little roses and on the Velcro straps. So I thought it was just enough matchy matchy. Uh, so we're gonna get those on. I brush his legs off to make sure nothing gets up under that sports boot. You don't want anything pressing on them in there, moving anything out of place. You, so their feet and legs need to be really clean when you put your sports boots on. Now that those back boots are on, I'm gonna take down the tail. I normally do the back boots first just because the tail can get in the way. Um, his tail does not normally get super wavy, but the tail bag does keep it 
really clean and I'd been working really hard with some purple shampoo at this point. So I normally keep their tails in a barrel bling tail bag, especially if we have a rodeo or a race coming up. Once his tail is done, I move on to those front boots. Again, making sure his legs are clean where I am putting them on. I make sure I get them in just the right spot um, before our run. So right now I'm thinking about what I need to do and thinking about that exhibition I had and what I learned from it. Um, I am still a big chicken about two-handing, so I was thinking about maybe doing it. I don't know. I know he kind of would benefit from it, but also don't want to be pulling on his mouth too much. Now I'm going to get those bell boots on, get my Troxel helmet on, and we are almost ready to go warm up. So I'm going to get him out after I get his bridle on and make sure that that throat latch is latched because sometimes I completely forget about it and just kind of leave it there until I inevitably realize I'm going to pull him out of his stall before I get on safety first here just a little bit. I am going to make sure that my cinch is tightened just enough for us to warm up. I always tighten it again right before we go into the arena because I don't want to be slipping off the side. That would be quite now that I'm about to get on, I can finally let my bell bottoms out, dust off all the shavings that got stuck in there, and hop on. I'm letting my bell bottoms breathe now that I'm on because I'm not going to be walking through anything like mud or just a puddle or even down the hallway in the barn. Bell bottoms just love to pick up every little thing and get super nasty. Now I'm going to walk him around, kind of like I did the day before, really getting him stretched out. I like to walk quite a bit before asking for anything else. They get really kind of not stretched out. They get kind of tight when they're in stalls and when they're hauling all the time. So when I don't have a place to put them out, I will absolutely get on and walk for a long time before we run. Now I'm going to try it. You can tell that the a uh, warm-up pin has a lot more people in it now that we are running the race. So I kind of have to navigate my way around everyone. And I think it's funny that I match quite a few people with my red shirt. So we are just going to continue doing what we did the day before. Walking both ways, trotting both ways, loping both ways. But since I'm really going to ask him to run this way, we will probably do just a little bit more trotting and a little bit more loping to make sure his muscles are prepared and ready to go.
I was not too mad about that run. Of course, he gets tons of treats and pets because he did so, so good for me. I just messed up at the third barrel and did not do what I needed to. Now I'm getting him in the wash rack and I am going to cold hose his legs. I really like to cold hose. I don't believe in anything more than I believe in some cold water or some ice. So I'm going to cold hose from his knee kind of down all the way to his foot, getting rid of a lot of the inflammation in there if there is any, and it really helps them with recovery after their run. So if I have access to a wash rack, I am absolutely going to do this for them. Um, I wouldn't if it was like two degrees outside, but it was probably in the 60s i don't remember exactly but i do still ice them in the winter just as long as it's not negative or you know super super cold i'm just gonna keep going up and down for probably about 10 minutes for both the legs and then i will move on and get his hawks he did have a past injury in one of his hawks so i focus on his hawks quite a bit when it comes to recovery I don't think it'll happen again, but I still want to make sure to do everything I can to prevent it, like warming up really, really good and then really focusing on his after run recovery. Once my time is up and I feel like everything got cold hose the right amount, I am going to turn the water hose off and hang it up. Um, it was just a random water hose. That was in the wash rack, but I'm still going to treat it with respect because I know it was somebody's here and it's time for bed. Now it is Saturday morning, so it's time for our second run. You can see I have on my really pale pink shirt. We're not going to be quite as intensely matchy-matchy, but I did think this shirt went with the boots we were going to be wearing this day. So I'm going to really, really brush him. He likes to kind of get down and push his shavings all around. So sometimes I come in and he has shavings all over him. And I just want to make sure nothing gets up under that saddle. That could bother him. I don't want to be him. I don't want him to be uncomfortable in any way, so I brush where the saddle goes and where the cinches go. Once I'm done brushing, I will start on his saddle pad. He was being really, really good, standing nice for me. Oh, well, before we get the saddle pad, we're going to pick his feet. This is going to ensure that there's nothing in there, and I'm going to see what his feet look like before I get on, make sure there's no rocks or any abnormalities in there, and this is going to help him be more comfortable. Horses don't really like to have rocks and stuff in their feet before they run, so we're just going to get a really good look at them, make sure nothing's packed in super tight. Sometimes if mud or dirt really packs in there, it can kind of be like they're wearing high heels, and I certainly do not want that, so I pick his feet out really really good and he was being really good for me this day sometimes when he knows he's gonna run he can be a little bit of a jerk but he was really really good i want to make sure again that he is comfortable in every way possible so we're on the last foot now i lied about the saddle pad a minute ago but i'm not gonna lie this time once i brush this hoof out we are gonna go grab my saddle pad and this saddle pad is a five star if you were wondering, and I'm going to get my lightweight master saddle on him, I throw it up there very gently. I don't want to slam it on his back, and I'm going to make sure that it is exactly where it needs to be, and I'm going to tent that saddle pad to relieve his withers a little bit. And now we are going to move on to those cinches. I make sure nothing's tangled under there. I make sure the cinch is clean. There's no dirt or anything that got stuck on it where it can makes contact with his skin. Um, I make sure that the back cinch is where it needs to be, and this day it actually went all the way up tight, no problem. Sometimes they will blow air in their stomachs while you're tacking up, it's another reason. You want to make sure your cinches are still tight before you get on, and Chester was staring at us the whole time. I think maybe he was a little jealous, but he gets a run not too long after this. And surprise, we are wearing the cowhide sunflower boots. So there is a little bit of yellow on there. So scary. Uh, they will never look this white ever again. This was our first run in them. 
I use my hand down his leg to make sure there's nothing on there, no shavings, no dirt, nothing else, and sometimes my hands get gross from that, but whatever, you can use a brush if you want. I do the hind boots first so I can get that tail. I went ahead and French braided it again last night after our first run, so I'm going to get it out. His tail, again, it really does not get all that wavy, but it's looking really pretty. I had been purple shampooing it pretty religiously, trying to make it a little bit wider. So there you can see it looks really nice and thick and a little wavy, which I love. Once the tail is done, we're going to move on to those front boots, making sure those legs are clean and that those boots are in just the right place to give him some port and some protection. I never want them to overreach and clip themselves, so... I always put on front boots and I always, always run in bell boots. I'm an all four boots kind of gal, but some people just run in the front boots and that's okay. It just depends on your horse. Now I'm going to use a matching white flare strip. I'm actually shocked I did not forget to do it since I did it last in our process. And I guess he did not want the kiss, but you know, whatever. It's okay. And we are going to wear my blue helmet today, add a little bit of variety and have a cotton candy kind of look going with the blue and the pink here. I'm making sure this helmet is fitting me right, that I get the chin strap in the right place, and that's fitting good. And he tries to steal that person's hay bag, but thankfully I caught him. We're going to get on again in this spot, and I'm going to make sure my saddle is tight so I don't slip off and embarrass myself in the warm-up pen, because I probably already embarrass myself sometimes in the warm-up pen enough. And he was actually being really patient for me here. I hop on and we ride off down the barn to the warm-up arena, and it's actually all connected, which was so, so nice. We never had to go back out side after getting on and we really are rocking that cotton candy look. I get him in to the warm-up pin and we're gonna do the same thing we've been doing. The race was reverse order so I was more towards the beginning this time so there's a little less people in here with me. As I'm walking around and trotting around I'm gonna think about my run the day before, think about everything I did good, think about all those positives and what I need to keep doing, and I'm going to be thinking about that third barrel. I didn't drive him up into it like I needed to. My feet got behind me, which caused him to blow out of the barrel and make our time a 16 at 3. I was not mad at our first or second barrel the day before, so I'm going to focus on those positives too. I like to focus on what went good and keep doing that every single time. So I'm thinking about all of that while I warm up and I'm ignoring all of the competition. This was our first race where I had competed against a lot of the really big famous pros and I just kind of had to think that it was just another barrel race and really we're all just people we're all people who want to win and do good by our horse so I try not to get too nervous over that because there's really just no reason but it was kind of fun to see how we shaped up against such a good tough group of girls I'm very thankful that I get to live this life and run at the caliber I do it's a lot of fun and sometimes it makes me really nervous and wish I was still just running at a local horse show but I think this year is going to be really really awesome and a really good learning experience so I'm doing the same thing you saw me do the day before really trotting both ways and loping both ways so he is really warm for his run and his tail is actually looking really good here. It almost looks like I crimped it so that French braid did its job and here it was still beautiful because I could still shampoo it. Right now it is negative two degrees and I cannot shampoo it and it makes me really really sad watching this but he looks so good and our outfit was cute. These sports boots were really cute so if you're wondering where they're from they are from Hot Head Stalls and I'll try to link everything possibly in the comments that he has on. So I'm just loping around, having a good time, making sure I'm not in anyone's way. We kind of all get in everyone's way though because <laughs> there are no rules really in the warm-up pen. Uh, we just go whatever direction we need to go and make it work. So you do what you need to do to get your horse warmed up and what you think your horse needs to give you the best chance to succeed. And now it's time for our second run. He's still walking in pretty good, but he was a little more raring to go this day because he knew what was up and I was told to get a little more over to the left. So I did and here we go into our first 
barrel and I was not ready for him to whip around it on his butt like that and then our second barrel was pretty good here I stayed holding on to the horn which is not great but our third barrel was much better than it was the day before and the clock showed this so the first day we were a 16.3 and now we ran a 15.90 which was awesome and now it is time for round three which is the short go so we had to be in the top 20 of the average to advance and he was so i was so proud of that we got to advance with a lot of great great girls um so i'm getting him brushed and ready i did not have an outfit planned for this day speaking of superstitions i thought it would probably be bad luck if I had set an outfit out to wear because then I probably wouldn't make it to the short go and then I'd be sad. <laughs> so I think I have on my kind of green shirt with my sponsor embroidery on it and I'm just saddling up like we have every other day. This one's a little bit earlier and it's going, it's going to go quite a bit faster because there's only 20 girls compared to like 200 girls. So I am just kind of taking my time, tacking up again, thinking about what I did good the day before and how I can improve that third barrel. And I am also going to have a little yellow on my tack today. We are going to call back to those black sunflower boots that we wore in our exhibition and get those on him. Okay, it is short go time. I was pretty excited, but also pretty nervous. So I'm petting on Dakota as we warm up. And now, since it was just the top 20, I really had to warm up with everyone that you see on TV. So I tried too hard not to be nervous about that at all. I knew I just needed to run my own race. Um, if I want to do good, then I have to beat myself, no one else. So here I am really just trying to gently warm him up, trotting around, loping around, and just doing what I have done the past few days. And while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about what I need to change in my run today, what I need to do different at that third barrel, if there's anything I need to keep doing, if there's anything I need to change. That is what's going on in my mind right now, and I cannot get over his tail. It looks so good. Um, it stayed in a barrel bling tail bag. The whole three days we were here, four-ish days we were here, so it is looking so good in these videos. I wish I could wash it right now, ugh, but summer will come soon enough. <laughs> so I'm just really, really working on getting him warm. I want to emphasize the importance of that. I never just hop on and go run. I wouldn't even do that in a practice, so I'm definitely not going to do it here.
49. Okay, that concludes our WPRA finals for the year. We came home with a little bit of money and a really good experience. Make sure you subscribe because you'll get a new video really soon. Bye!